Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the lesser known anime movie, Lou Over the Wall. Yes, and this movie follows Kai, a middle school student whose life changes when he meets a mermaid named Lou, L-U. Yeah. And for Perfect. this film, it starts off very strong and fun. But halfway through, it unfortunately starts going downhill in quality, kind of tumbling over the wall. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that was a fitting name, Lou yes, Over the Wall. Yes. Lou went over the wall. Right. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be future podcasts and world of pause videos. Now, first, I want to say before we get started, if this was the type of movie you like, where this is how it goes, where it starts upbeat, then crashes, then, you know, found your movie. Exactly. But for us, it just didn't work out. Yeah. And the main issue was that it wasn't a bad concept. The animation was erratic, but it fit for how loose the Lou was. It fit. And it was actually something a little different. You kind of get the feeling of Ponyo when you see it in the beginning. And for here, yeah, Kai was sort of to himself. He didn't. He had friends, but he wasn't really all that excited about anything. He was more really just grounded and didn't really have much emotion to him. Part of that is because, you know, they told him he's got to be a fisherman. He had literally no other option in his life or job to do but that. Right. And then they have this thing in his town where this is actually a thing in anime where mermaids are real. They're canon. And here, they want to catch mermaids or they think they're evil. So if they ever come around, they are going to catch them like fish. Which now that we're talking... Lure of the Wall sounds like Luca. Yeah, yeah, weird, right? Maybe they're inspired by it. And with this, um, he kind of gets, like, there's supposed to be the development with Kai as it goes along when he meets Lou. And you don't know Lou's a mermaid at first because she's not, like, his age or older. She's actually, like, a little girl, like, like Ponyo. And I think it's hilarious because usually they have uh, usually they have the, the like this mermaid thing. They usually be the same age as the character, but they didn't have it this time. And it worked because he was still finding joy with her. She brought in a lot of fun. She could control the water and things and fish. Like I said, like with other characters you see in other films with mermaids. And he was actually having fun with her. And he sort of became like the big brother to her. When she was on land, she would have the legs. and she had the water, she would have the fish tail. And the only thing is she couldn't be in the sunlight because they, they couldn't, uh, they would burn a bit, kind of like a right. vampire. Right. But it was actually funny for a big part of the film. It was like, yeah, it starts off with supposed to be bland and boring or uh, at each other's throats or something. But then as it goes on, it's supposed to loosen up. You find the fun in it and it fit. It really fit. We were actually having a real great time watching it. Yes. You were actually getting to know the characters, liking the characters. You liked that he was like this big brother to her. He was having fun with her and dance with her, taking care of her, trying to keep her a secret. It was great. Right. And then it got to a point where you had the trope of, oh, they want to capture the, the mermaid. Right. And it's like, okay, we know it's going to go. We'll get it over with. And at first, it was actually okay because... They didn't hurt her. They were just going to use her as a main attraction and get more people to come to this uh, sort of like sea world type thing they had. And she would kind of dance erratically and it was fun and they would dance with her. And then as the animation got all wonky and it was hilarious. But after someone actually tried to hurt her and take her away, that's when the film unfortunately went from being a really fun film to being kind of depressing yes. and more of a message of. How people are hurting the oceans and everything. And it was like... Uh, like two different movies. Yeah. And unfortunately, then suddenly the characters became very unlikable. Kai became unlikable. He seemed like almost like he did not care. The friends started being jerks. If, if the town was back to being sort of aggressive towards each other, the water was rising and kind of flooding everything. People just kind of weren't not caring. Yeah. They just wanted to get out of there and they were still mad at each other. It was just like... What happened with the movie? You were on a roll with the town becoming closer together and they were becoming kinder towards each other and all that. But then you get to this part of the film and suddenly everyone's on a mean streak. It was like, what, what happened? Yeah. So, that is what made this movie for us not one that we would recommend. We saw another series that was similar in terms of the topic uh, Alone in the Sea. Yeah. And it was done much better in terms of a crisis, mm -hmm. people living in the 
motion and yeah. so forth. It was done beautifully. It's actually one of my favorite slice of life anime. Yeah. But this movie here just didn't. It didn't. It just didn't hit right. Unfortunately, right. and it could have. Yes. That's what was only unfortunate. But it could have. Yeah, it might have been the best anime movie you've ever seen, but. It was something lighthearted and fun. It felt like two people had two different ideas, and they did one idea where it was a fun, really upbeat movie and crazy and, and silly, and then another person came in and said, well, we're not doing that. We wanted to be more aggressive. We wanted to be about uh, how the people treat the oceans, and they're wrong for doing that, and then it just changes everything. Yeah. And so bad that even the critics treated it harshly. It was like the animation and stuff, it doesn't make up for the story it felt now it just, unfortunately it felt uh cluttered right. it felt slow it felt interesting it felt mean spirited yeah. and it affected the first half unfortunately as well it wasn't like oh just watch the movie up to this point and quit it affects the first half because now you know this is coming and you're kind of like oh gosh we know it's gonna go down from here so you can't even enjoy the first half anymore well, enjoying the fun music parts because you love that she loved music and yes. he danced with her. And the only bit of that that remained was the ending. There is a happy ending. There is one. But you but been dragged to, the moment, to it. And yes. It's not happy. It doesn't feel earned right. anymore. Right. Now, yeah, they will say Lou is not hurt. There is a happy ending. It's supposed to be fun, but you don't feel fun when you're After watching you've it. you gone through the second half of the movie, you just felt like, like okay, finally it's over. we just pretend that part didn't happen from the first half to the end. Yay! Yeah, pretty much. So if you have seen Lou Over the Wall, which we saw on Netflix, let us know what you think in the comments. We don't know if it's still there or not. Yeah, it's been a while now, so... So hopefully it is. If you have seen this and you really like it, let us know for you what made you like this movie. Right. If you haven't, type it into the keyword search on Netflix, see if it's still there. I have no idea if it's available on Amazon or any streaming service yeah, because, because it's the only place I've ever heard of Lou over the wall. Right. And be sure to like, subscribe, and notification bell dates on future podcasts and we'll pause videos. Absolutely. We really wish we could say more, but unfortunately, that's pretty much it for the film. That's it. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace.